ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Member FDIC. It is Monday, November 29th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling us on the White Claw phone lines at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. White Claw Hard Seltzer, it is made pure. Our text line is open up for you as well, 304-523-2275. We've got everyone you love to see at the union here today. Herb's here behind the bar. Your favorite patrons are here. I'm here. The Monday special is here. That's a dollar fifty bottles, two dollar call shots. You get that every Monday here at the Union Pub and Grill. I know I say it a lot, but we got a lot to get into today. So let's do that. First of all, what a rough weekend for Thundering Herd fans. What a rough weekend. The football game probably more disappointing than the basketball game. I thought. Marshall played well against Indiana. I thought Dan D'Antoni had a good game plan. I mean, there might be some things he'd like to clean up, but all in all, I think he should be happy, at least with several aspects of that game. And the Thundering Herd, very competitive against Indiana. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Also, women's basketball taking on Michigan State. I thought they were competitive on Sunday. It was a pretty good contest. Between Michigan State and Purdue, I think the one thing we found out about Marshall's women's team is they can play. They clean a few things up. They should be a contender in Conference USA. I will be now disappointed if Marshall is not a contender in conference play. There's still a lot of games to go through. But at the end of the day, I like what I saw against the two Big Ten teams. We're going to hear from Tony Kemper a little bit later on. Now, Let me qualify this. Some of this was in preparation for tomorrow's contest against Wright State. However, we just got the word a few minutes ago that Wright State postponing and canceling some games because of COVID implications. There's been an outbreak of COVID among some of their Tier 1 athletes. So the game against Marshall has been canceled and declared a no contest at this time. I don't know if there will be a chance to reschedule that matchup. But at this time, Marshall's women's game against Wright State canceled and declared a no contest. So opportunity for Tony Kemper's squad to maybe get a few more practice matches in, a few more opportunities to rest and get ready. The disappointing thing here is I think this team was ready to go. This team was fired up, ready to go, go back at it and try to get the disappointment of Michigan State. Just kind of bury that. We'll hear from Tony Kemper a little bit later on. I was with him on Zoom earlier today. But the Herd, 3-2. and two. Michigan State's a pretty good team. Receiving votes, and Marshall had a shot with them. But Tony Kemper, my interview with him earlier from today, we'll hear that a little bit later on. The program, of course, uh, the football game, we probably want to talk about that. Or do we really want to talk about that? Do we want to just forget that? Because Marshall at half, I thought, okay, this is – This is maybe going to be a competitive game. You're concerned when Grant Wells goes out. And you think, okay, hopefully he's going to come back in. Marshall's going to play more of a defensive battle with Western Kentucky. Instead, Western Kentucky just unloads on the herd, and it's a 53-21 victory for Western Kentucky. So what does that mean? It means that Marshall does not go to the Conference USA Championship it means that Western Kentucky will and play UTSA, which lost to North Texas, making North Texas bowl eligible. And so now you're trying to figure out, where, well, where's Marshall going to go? Bowling. That's the next concern here. What is the next opportunity for Marshall? And it's not going to be the Bahamas Bowl because Middle Tennessee has already taken that spot. And honestly, I'm kind of grateful. Sure, I like the date personally as far as travel is concerned, and not so much. If you're a Herd fan, maybe if you have the opportunity to go, you can. But uh, this isn't a bowl you just hop in the car and drive to. It's not going to be a well-attended bowl. And so where are you looking as far as your bowl's concerned? And I'm going to tell you one right now. You might think Boca. I'm saying Frisco. I'm going to say the Herd goes to Frisco. I just have a feeling. I can't really put a finger on it. But I think Frisco is going to be the destination for the Thundering Herd. It just feels like if Marshall gets a bowl, Marshall should be happy to get a bowl. 
there won't be any of this negotiation, hey, we'd like Boca, or we'd like to go to this destination instead. I think basically it's, okay, here's the bowl that's available to you. Do you accept? Great. We'll see you in Frisco. I kind of feel that's going to happen. Anything else that happens, though, I'll be surprised. we got a few days to really see what happens, conference championships, of course, and, of course, we've got Heisman voting beginning soon, so college football ramping up. We're going to have, I think, an interesting next few days, not only with Heisman voting, the conference championships. I mean, we've got job changes again. ESPN reported it. Lincoln Riley leaving Oklahoma, going to take the same position at USC. So we'll get into all of that with you. I want to get your text in. Of course, we'll open that up for you at 304-523-2275. That's 304-523-2275. If you've got anything you want to get off your chest before we move on to the bowl game and, of course, start looking more towards basketball, Saturday after the game, we had a long night. We had the football game, then we had the Marshall basketball game. Then I got back on the air for our usual post game that we do. It's usually after football or basketball. Instead, it was a combo. And basketball, not really disappointed if, with the effort. Football, on the other hand, that was a different story. And the texts were waiting for me. I saved them. We got a few people who jumped on the text line, and you can as well. It's open to you. It's 304 304- 523-2275. Uh, here are some of the texts I got. One was positive. This texter wrote, the losses have hurt this year, but I see great things for the future. Doc's first year, 5-7. and seven. Huff's 7-5. and five, And a bowl game. It takes time. Go hurt. And that was from Michael checking in from Ohio on Saturday. And then it got a little dark. Just a little. Not terrible, but if you're Coach Huff, you want to turn that stuff off. You want to turn off Tom Bragg's chat board, you want to turn that off, and you want to turn off Paul Swan's post-game show because there were a couple of things that came out from texters. One, texters told me this was an embarrassing loss. That was one texter started with that. This is an embarrassing loss. The coaches were horrible. You have Ali in the backfield, and you let Zaban run it again on fourth and one? And that was a question mark there if I didn't portray that uh, properly. Uh, the texter wrote, that was real genius. Then who calls an onside kick only down 15 with over 12 minutes to play? The play calling was just horrendous. Zaban can throw, but let him throw downfield. Quit calling that stupid sideways pass. And that was uh, just an example of some of the texts I got on Saturday. Another attack, another texter wrote, uh, and he signed it. He signed it. He was, this is, this is from Chandler. Chandler signed his. He wanted everyone to know that Marshall, pretty much ruined his night. He said that Marshall, for the love of God, what are we doing? And took a shot at Luke Zaban and a couple other things. I won't re I won't re uh, iterate all of that here, but I will say this. We had a lot of people venting on Saturday that the basketball game maybe would have helped if Marshall could have won. Instead the herd loses it. It still was a valiant effort, so I think you take that small victory from this. But we'll open the text line up for you, and it's 304-523-2275. It's 304-523-2275. If you want to say your piece, this is the day to do it. This is your opportunity. We're also here for you for the rest of the week getting you set for basketball. We've got basketball to talk about with Dan D'Antoni this week. We, of course, got women's basketball to look a little further ahead to now as the game tomorrow has been canceled with Wright State. So we're going to hear from Tony Kemper a little bit later on the program as well. Get your phone calls in at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. But what says you? Where are you at on this? We're a couple of days away now from that loss. We've moved on. And now you're, you're kind of, where are you at? Have you settled down? Have you gotten over it? Have you had an opportunity to maybe step back from it and go, okay, you know, this is first year head coach here, first season. Yeah, you hate to lose to Western Kentucky. And I think, is that part of it? It's because it was Western Kentucky, a team that a few weeks ago was considered to go into the MAC because Conference USA is starting to fall apart. And without Middle Tennessee, maybe hosing them, 
the way that they did by saying they're going to stay in Conference USA. This could have been a team that could have went into the Mid-American Conference and I think done well as a program, but instead uh, I think Western Kentucky and Liberty are going to be the football classes of Conference USA. But does this sting because of that? Does it hurt because of that? I mean, were there some other things that uh, maybe bothered you about what happened, how it went down? I mean, I'm not going to really talk about attendance too much. It was it was under 20,000, and you know, we could we can go into all the reasons there, but I'm, I'm really not going to go down that road too much with you because holiday weekend, so much going on. Not Not that storyline today for you. Instead, I just want to get your thoughts on, okay, we've calmed down now, right? We're looking ahead to the bowl. Are you going to be disappointed if it's, say, Frisco? I mean, does a bowl mean anything to you right now with the way the season has gone so far? Some ups and downs here. The last few games have not been necessarily where you want to see the herd. You had the low with UAB. You had the the bounce back with Charlotte. Then you had Western Kentucky and just the way that went. So today's the day. Say your piece, right? 304-523-2275. 304-523-2275. We'll get all of that in. We'll talk to you. Get your text in. Also, we have got basketball to talk to you about. Uh, we'll hear from Tony Kemper a little bit later on. We'll talk a little bit about Marshall's performance against Indiana. We'll break this football game down a little bit more for you. Uh, we'll do our very best to get it all in for you today. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Paul Swan, here at the Union Pub and Grill for today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank, the local bank that's here for every step of your life's journey. Member FDIC. We're here today at the Union Pub and Grill for today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to hear from Tony Kemper in just a little bit. Uh, Unfortunately, Marshall doesn't have a game tomorrow. The women were scheduled to play Wright State. However, there is an issue with Wright State. They're going to have to cancel some games on their schedule. Uh, COVID precautions. uh, They have some COVID positives in their program. So no women's game tomorrow. Unfortunate for Tony Kemper. You come off a game against Michigan State where you perform well. You, You don't want to take a moral victory, even though you played tough and could have won that game but I'm sure he wanted to get right back at it and on the court with his squad. That's not going to be the case, but I had a chance to catch up with him earlier this afternoon, so we're going to hear from Tony Kemper in a little bit. We'll get your phone calls in at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Men's basketball looked pretty good on Saturday, don't you think? I mean, that was the one thing we had. After Marshall lost the football game, we had basketball just to jump right into I mean, that was, I think, a good thing to have. Instead of just sulking a little bit, oh, Marshall football loss. Hey, they're playing Indiana right now, and they're playing really tough. And, of course, the herd left it, led at halftime. I mean, that was the one thing. You look at this game and go, okay, you're Assembly Hall. You're leading Indiana at halftime. You're going back and forth. However, fell a little short, 90-79. to 79. Indiana's pretty good. They're 6-0 now. And Marshall dropping to four and two. Uh, some of the things I took away from this game that I thought were positive. One, I thought Tavion Kinsey, always a positive there when he's in double digits. But it's not 10 points, 11 points. He had 21 points. It was seven for 17 on the, on the stat line for him. He also had seven of 10 from the free throw line. So I thought that was a solid performance for Tavion. I mean, I expect that from him. Anything less than that is a pedestrian, and it's not what Tavion Kinsey can do. So you see that. You see a good line from Andrew Taylor. And, again, we we like the stats, right? You talk about where he's at on the court, what he's doing, what he's making happen, how he's positioning himself, how he's in the flow of the offense. You talk about all that stuff as well. But point-wise, we look at production. Like, okay, he can do all that, but what do he do on the court? Well, 20 points. That is a season high for him. Seven of 13 attempts from the field. He was three for five from the three-point line. He had four steals. That was a game high. So I liked what he was able to do. He should feel confident, and that's what you take away from this game. The tools were there to compete with Indiana. 
maybe you need to sharpen a couple of the tools just a little bit more. You know, maybe you, you need to go back to the toolbox, organize it a little bit better, just do a few things. Fix the toolbox up because you got the tools to do what you need to do to be competitive. And Obina Anicilli Killen, 16 points. He was 8-4-11 from the field. He had a team eye, eight rebounds, and he also had three blocks. We'd like to see more from him. However, that was not the case because Indiana's tough. And I'll tell you what, you want to talk about an All-American, Trace Jackson Davis, game high, 43 points for Indiana. And here's a crazy stat that I didn't realize until I saw it. That was the most ever by a player inside Assembly Hall. He also had a game-high five shots blocked, so that's pretty good. He blocked five shots. He had a game-high and an Assembly Hall-high 43 points. So no player has ever scored that many points inside a legendary venue like Assembly Hall. And I might go back a little ways. Back in the days where we had, like, what, 10, 15 cable channels at most? and I might be generous here. You know, one of the channels we had here in at least Huntington and in, in Cabell County and in, in this region, we had the Indiana channel out of Bloomington. I believe uh, it was out of Bloomington. And so some of us have a familiarity with Indiana. I mean, Indiana is college basketball. It's a blue blood. It is a program that has had a lot of success over the years, a lot of prestige. You know, it might not be Indiana of old, but it's still Indiana. And so to think about all the great games that have been played inside Assembly Hall, I mean, it's not its not a terrible venue. its It just oozes with historic presence. It's not the newest venue. I mean, it's simple. It's Assembly Hall. It's just a great barn to watch a basketball game in. And so, you know, to think – to go all the way back when that building opened up, 43 points. And, of course, you hate the fact that it was against the Herds. So that's one there. You, you hate this in the record books, that Trace Jackson Davis recorded 43 points, a record in, inside Assembly Hall against the Thundering Herd. But I was all around happy with Marshall's performance against Indiana. I thought Marshall shot well for the most part. I thought Marshall could have done a few things better. You've got some time now to take what you learn from that game, feel confident about your squad, and I think that's one of the big takeaways. I, for, really, for Marshall basketball, for the men and women, the biggest takeaway here for the last few games should be confidence, that you can compete with name programs, better-funded programs, bigger programs. You can compete. Now, with that said, you got to take the next step. It's great that you can compete, and for a program that's trying to find its footing, like the women's team, you feel good about your squad. You know you can compete. With the men, you know you can compete. You feel like you got a good team. You can make some noise in Conference USA. You can play basketball with a lot of the better teams in the top 25, 50, 100, the RPI, whatever you want to use as your metric here. But you play tough against Indiana, you feel like you've done something, but now you got to take that and move it to the next level. you got to finish. you got to get some of those big games. You don't want to be just known for, hey, that's a good basketball team. They can compete with a program like Indiana. You want to get to a point where you can beat an Indiana. You can get some signature wins like that. That's how you build your program. So I don't think anyone's taking the moral victories here for basketball. I know one thing is for certain that you feel good about where basketball is at this moment. You should anyway. If you don't, I don't know I don't know what to tell you. You can clean a lot of things up, but at the same time, I like where the herd was Sunday against Michigan State on the women's side. I like where the herd was on the court against Indiana. And when we continue, we're going to hear from Tony Kemper. Had a chance to hop on his post game yesterday and then uh, today he had his weekly press conference, so had an opportunity to sit down and talk to him for a, a couple of minutes about the game against Michigan State. And just a forward look to Wright State. However, if you just joined us, that game has been canceled. We do not have a game tomorrow for the women because of COVID issues with Wright State and their program. So if you just joined me, the women's game tomorrow has been canceled. 
and has been declared a no contest. So when we continue, we're going to hear from Tony Kemper. Just keep that in mind. We're going to be talking to him, thinking we had a Wright State game coming up. That's not going to be the case, but I still wanted to bring that to you. So when we continue, we'll get your text in, 304-523-2275. We'll hear from Tony Kemper. All that's coming up on today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. We're here today at the Union Pub and Grill. You know what we do every Monday at the Union Pub and Grill? Of course, we enjoy the Monday special, $1.50 bottles. It's $2 call shots. You get that here at the Union Pub and Grill. And if you're very lucky, and I mean if you're very lucky, you might sometimes get to sit at the bar with the proprietor, Herb Stanley. That's an added feature of coming down to the Union Pub and Grill. So we invite you to come down here every Monday, of course. Uh, you can catch Monday night football in season. I'm telling you what right now, uh, it's going to be a fun run to the last few weeks of the regular season. We'll talk about the Bengals later. By the way, Steelers fans, don't think I forgot about you. Don't think I forgot about you whatsoever, Steelers fans. I'm just letting the uh, I'm letting the wounds heal a little bit. Uh, you guys see that yesterday, by the way? At 41-10 beating the Bengals issue to the Pittsburgh Steelers. What's that? Three in a row now? I haven't forgot about you, Steelers fans. But I want to hear from Tony Kemper first because the women were scheduled to play tomorrow against Wright State. That's off now due to COVID concerns within the Wright State program. So the herd game has been canceled, declared a no contest. But Coming off, I think, a really solid performance against Michigan State on Sunday. Had a chance to uh, join Coach Kemper's pregame conversation we usually have with him ahead of the game that's upcoming. So we might hear a little thing or two about Wright State. Just kind of get uh, a feeling for you know where he was at as he was preparing of course, we found out as we were going on the air that the game was canceled, so um, we're going to bring you in its entirety uh, what I have for you here today. Uh, this is me joining Tony Kemper earlier today to talk about what happened against Michigan State. Also, uh, we'll think of it as a general conversation now and just take Wright State out of your brain, but uh, here's our conversation from earlier. Yeah, so obviously coming off of what ended up being a dis- disappointing result in – you know, the final score at Michigan State, I thought our team grew. Um, you definitely saw that from, I think we performed better from Purdue to Michigan State. Um, really a one or two possession game up there. And I think it was, I think it was a two point game. We had the ball with around a minute to go. And then I think it was a four point game. We had the ball again around 30, 40 seconds to go. So definitely tighter than the 10 points um, our group feels like. We need to be cleaner at the end on both ends of the floor uh, to come away with the win, and they're right, um, and that includes all of us. You know, so that's kind of the wrap-up of, of maybe the first part of this week, which we've always kind of put these next three games together, I think. Um, you know, tomorrow, Wright State, quality opponent. Have, they've been on the road basically all year to this point against really quality teams. So I I think their record doesn't reflect the kind of group that they are. Um, We will have to, you know, be ready to to play well at home, which is a thing in basketball. You really got to do a good job of taking care of your home floor. Uh, They have really a pretty athletic group at all positions. They're aggressive on the offensive end. They'll be the same on defense. So we'll have to, uh, you know, the typical stuff. We'll have to find a way to rebound uh, with them. Um, need to get back and get our defense set, make it, uh, make it a half-court game on that end of the floor. Um, at times, we struggled with that at Michigan State, so we got to get that, got to get that back a little bit to a certain degree and get out on shooters and, you know, really guard the ball well because they'll, they'll stress our defense from a, from a uh, driving perspective. Now that you've seen what your team's capable of, now that you know, or at least we've seen, things get a little harder than standard phase, and now that you know that okay, you can reach this level, let's take it to the next level. 
I think that we came out of there more confident group. And I believe that we have always felt like we should, this group should be taking steps forward. And, and I think we started the year um, doing that. You know, we're 3-0 and going into these two games. Gave, us our, gave ourselves a chance to win. Really, either one of them needed to play better to get it done. But I also know that if you had told me at the beginning of the year, you know, whatever the number was at Purdue, you're going to be down six points on the road at Purdue with three minutes to go, I probably – I mean, you kind of have to say, I'll take it. And you got to take your chances at the end. You know, if you told me yeah, they're, you're, it's 73-71 at Michigan State with a minute and 30 seconds to go, you say, we'll do it and we'll, we'll take it. So um, – we put ourselves in good positions in those games and didn't play quite well enough to get it done. So it should help us transition from a confidence perspective. But I also know that with that comes, you know, we need to do a good job against Wright State. We need to do a good job against Coppin State. What just went on and the if, ands, or buts about Michigan State are completely irrelevant now. And now we have a new challenge against, you know, basically a peer who is a program that's had a bunch of success lately, um, NCAA tournaments and different things like that. We need to grow in our ability to, to play well in a game like that, you know, and the consistency of our entire program to be better in the Wright State game and then followed up with Coppin State, and then we got to handle finals, and then we got to do it again at St. Bonaventure. And so stringing, can we as a program string together a whole bunch of good games in the first semester? That, to me, is what we're going through. And I do think if you look at what we've done, we're putting together a pretty consistent body of work. We, need, we, we wanted to win one. You know, we wanted to beat Michigan State. But I don't know that there's been a stinker of an effort out of I don't know, five games. You know, we've got to continue that. We need to lace them up and get after it tomorrow. You can talk about some of your performances. What you like the most out there when you're looking at your squad? And, and maybe, I know coaches don't want to give too much away, but uh, what do you think you need to be uh, fixed? So uh, the thing I like most, the, the bounce back from two for 21 from three, followed by one for 17 at Purdue. And didn't talk, I don't, didn't talk about that a lot other than to tell them they're, they're good offensive players, so quit acting like you're not. In, in your own mental space, really. Get out of your own way. You know, shoot the ball. I got a ton of confidence in you. Um, you know, put your shoulders back and compete. And I, I think you definitely saw a team much closer to what they actually are offensively. You know, us running around and shooting it off the side of the backboard like we did at Purdue, it, it shouldn't be happening. And, and I thought we kind of got that corrected again. Now, basketball, you play so many times, it will happen again where we don't shoot it well. You know? And I, I think that coming out of Purdue, that is a great lesson to learn. You're still right there. You were on the road against a quality team, shooting as bad as you could shoot, and you were still right there. And so you can win games. You don't have to have everything hitting on all cylinders to win games. And so... That is the thing that I like the most about Michigan State. Suppress the thing that just didn't go very well and move on with it. I thought we did that very well. Um, I got to talking, Paul, and I forgot the second half of your question. But I, I know there was two parts. I was going to ask you, just you know, if you could, without giving too much away, you know, what are you keying in on maybe uh, performance-wise, either as a team or individually? What are you keying on to try to set up? Well, I, down the stretch of that game, um, I think we put a little, maybe going back to the same type of mentality that we had at Purdue that led to one for 17, we pressed in the last two minutes of that game. So we had played calm, we had got the ball where we wanted to go, and, it, and we, we tightened up and we, we tried too hard, which sounds completely opposite of what you need to do, but it is actually what you need to do. you got to relax. The ball, you, we got it to really good players. And, you know, I've gone back and told them both that again. We got the ball right where we wanted it to go. Um, just be calm and figure out how they guarded you and get them, you know. And so that, I think, is the biggest lesson. You have to be better at the end. We needed a stop. We didn't get it. Um, we needed a shot on goal, um, and we didn't get that. So I, I think 
38 minutes of pretty good, or maybe 39 and a half minutes of pretty good, cleaner on offense right, right there in the last two or three possessions. Tony Kemper, conversation had earlier in the day, this was before the news came out, that Marshall women's basketball game versus Wright State tomorrow canceled due to COVID-19 concerns with the Wright State Raiders program. There is no word that that's going to be attempted to be rescheduled as it is now. It is canceled, and it is considered a no contest. When we continue, we'll get your text in. we we'll open up the text line for you, give you a chance to vent on whatever you want to vent on from the weekend, 304-523-2275, 304-523-2275. Also, we will, of course, get your phone calls in if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, 877-420-TALK to join us on the White Claw phone lines. We will talk about coaching changes in college football. Again, Pittsburgh Steelers fans, I might not talk about it much, but I haven't forgot about you. Just remember, Joe Burrow owns you. That's all I'm going to say to Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Joe Burrow owns you. Uh, And you know what? The ground game was pretty dominating, too, for the Bengals. Pretty solid. Joe Mixon, uh, he owns you as well. So I'll just leave it at that, Pittsburgh Steelers fans. You know who you are. Your silence is all I need. Thank you very much. More coming up. It's The Drive, ESPN, 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. We're here today at the Union Pub and Grill. Every Monday when you join us here at the Union Pub and Grill, you get $1.50 on bottles. You get $2 call shots. We do that here every Monday at the Union Pub and Grill. I like to kind of think that it's my special. Of course, that's the Union special. There's a special every day, so uh, make sure you visit every day here at the Union Pub and Grill. So uh, we haven't really seen all the bowl projections yet. Last time I was checking over at bowlseason.com, let's kind of get a feel for where Marshall might be going. Uh, and it was the r l Carriers New Orleans Bowl with Marshall taking on Louisiana. I don't think that's going to happen now. Instead, I'm thinking, and I've seen this a couple of places, maybe it's going to be Frisco. I think Frisco. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be Boca. I don't know if it's going to be one of those earlier, nicer destination bowls. I mean, Frisco's not a terrible destination. But I kind of feel like that might be where the herd ends up. Where say you? And, of course, you can join us on our text line this hour at 304-523-2275, 304-523-2275. I had a texter right today. He's got his picks right now for the uh, college playoff and his picks are Alabama Notre Dame Clemson and OSU okay I'm gonna say Ohio State I'm not no 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 that's not not, no none of that's right none of that's right um I don't know where this texture is coming from on that so no that's not right uh it's going to be Cincinnati for one I think Michigan Georgia, Alabama. That that's we'll see, we'll see what that looks like. But uh, you can if you've got predictions like that, I'll take them. I'm not going to say they're right, but I'll take your predictions right there. That was um, that's one I wasn't expecting today. I wasn't expecting that kind of lineup there. Alabama, Notre Dame, Clemson, Ohio State. Uh, maybe this is a, a text in response to maybe last year. This is not this year for sure. And, of course, again, uh, we'll take your phone calls as well, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Huntington High, I haven't mentioned them, and I need to. I sent Billy Seals a text today. I figured his brand-new phone, the one he had to replace, uh, his broken phone, the one he dropped on the football field, was blowing up. So I waited a couple of days, and I shot him a congratulatory text the Huntington Highlanders, the top team in the state of West Virginia in Class AAA, will face off against the second-best team record-wise and ranking-wise in Martinsburg, Wheeling Island Stadium. It is going to be on Saturday. They're going to show down at high noon. Guess what? We'll have it for you right here on ESPN 94.1. And AM 930, Huntington defeated Cabell Midland 37-15 to 
and the Class AAA Football State Semifinal. That game was at Bob Sang Field on Friday night. Did you miss the game? Don't worry. I got you covered. Andrew Rogers and Woody Woodrum had the call. You can go to our website right now and catch the radio replay of Huntington and Cabell Midland. If you want to go back and relive it, enjoy it. If you're a Cabell Midland fan, uh, good season. I think a really good season. One of the best teams in the state of West Virginia. Uh, nothing to be disappointed about in the season. Unfortunately for Cabell Midland, Huntington High was just the better team, and it could have gone either way. You know, the way that these two programs uh, usually end up, it could go either way. So Huntington, the better program this year. But congratulations to uh, Cabell Midland. But if you want to go listen to that game, you didn't get a chance to listen to it the first time, or you want to go back and relive it, you were there and you want to hear the call. Go to our website, WRVC.com. Andrew Rogers and Woody Woodrum have all of that action for you, and you can relive it. And I tell you what, it was a good call. It was a really fun game to listen to. And I tell you, I was in the car. I was transitioning between one place and another. I got in the car, and Cabell Midland had scored. And I thought, okay, uh, this is going to be a high-scoring game because Cabell Midland just, boom, scored. I'm like, okay. This should be fun. If you like offense, this will be fun. Forget the defenses. But that wasn't the case. Huntington High, Billy Seals, is a, he's known for defense. That's his, that's his thing. And if his offense can put up some points and he can clamp down on Martinsburg, because the last time the Huntington High faced Martinsburg in a championship situation, Huntington High came really close to beating Martinsburg. This could be the year that Martinsburg – falls in the championship game. I know they're trying to do some fundraising right now to get those kids up to Wheeling and buses. So uh, if you uh, are anywhere near the Huntington High athletic program, uh, you might want to inquire how you can help. Uh, We do know that they are uh, posting on their Facebook accounts things that you can do to help them out. Should be fun. We'll have that game for you right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I mentioned coaching changes. It used to be Oklahoma was a big-time program for a coach, right? You would think if you got that job, you'd hang on to it. And Lincoln Riley's been there a few years. Well, he is going to leave. He's been there five seasons. Lincoln Riley is going to leave, and he's going to take the coaching position at USC. He is, I think, going to do a fantastic job there. But why would you leave Oklahoma? You're going into the SEC, right? I mean, Oklahoma was 10-2. and two. But they did lose Bedlam. They lost Oklahoma State. And they're not going to be in the Big 12 title game. So no title there for Oklahoma. However, Oklahoma's a pretty good program, right? You're going to go to the SEC. It's going to be great for Oklahoma. You're going to have a lot more resources, right? Well, that might not be the case. I think Lincoln Riley, the way that he coaches – And the style of play that he's looking for will fit perfectly at USC. Look for USC to be more relevant here with Lincoln Riley as a head coach. That's a good hire. I don't know where Oklahoma goes. It's a great job. I don't think, though, that Lincoln Riley is making a bad move here. If anything, this might be a better move. You move to the Pac-12, you get to coach the way you like to coach in a league that I think will be – very conducive for you to have success in, put USC maybe back into the national picture, national spotlight, championship considerations. If they expand the playoff, you know, even better. Because right now, that's the thing. I get why the SEC is so good. I get that. But if Oklahoma and Nebraska and all these other teams maybe would have stayed together a long time ago, the Big 12 would have been really strong. Really solid. But instead, you have all these traditional schools that were in the Big 12 move. And then so you had Texas and you had Oklahoma, two of the the big dogs left in the the Big 12 and decided, no, we're done. And so give the Big 12 credit. It's trying to um, build back. Cincinnati is going to be a really good get. I think it's going to be a really strong basketball league. Uh, Cincinnati is a nice travel partner for West Virginia. I don't know how Mountaineers truly feel about it. I'm sure I'll find out. But I think that's a good move as far as a a school that complements West Virginia as far as geography is concerned. But at the end of the day, 
you, know, you would think Oklahoma going into the SEC, uh, maybe you just feel that Oklahoma isn't up to spec. Maybe there's some catch-up to do. You know, you're going to be receiving more revenue, but maybe you can't compete with the likes of Alabama and Georgia. And that's a hard task right there, compete with Alabama, Georgia, a few other of those programs. I know uh, Kentucky is trying to be competitive. The um, the Wildcats are, are making some noise in the SEC. And, you know, it's not impossible to say that Kentucky might be up there real soon competing. Maybe not on Alabama's level, but getting there getting competitive, right? Well, that's going to do it for this edition of The Drive here at the Union Pub and Grill. We are here every Monday. Don't forget, you can take advantage of the Monday special. That's $1.50 bottles and $2 call shots. That's every Monday here at the Union Pub and Grill. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll hopefully have a um, have a fun week planned for you. We're, we're going to try to get you past football. I know it's tough. Football was tough over the weekend. But, again, I just want to point out that it wasn't all bad. If you're a Bengals fan, it wasn't all bad because, again, the Bengals beat the Steelers. That's going to be me for the next seven days. I, you know what? I don't think I'm letting this go because the Bengals not only beat the Steelers, they swept the Steelers. I'm not letting that go. I'm just going to keep that and remember that and enjoy that for at least several months. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for tuning in. Back tomorrow on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. WRBC Huntington, W231BS Huntington, broadcasting from the Oscars Breakfast Burgers and Brew Studios. This is ESPN 94.1 and AM 930.